Coach Gundy, thank you so much for having us in your office, man. This is awesome. Well, I appreciate you guys being here. Our annual visit, preseason, a lot of fun. Absolutely, it's the best. And, you know, last year, I could tell you knew you had a pretty good football team. You felt good about where you guys were going into the season and just inches away from your second Big 12 championship. You know, let's start back there. Do you use last year at the end of that Big 12 title as motivation? Do you, do you, you know, put it away and not think about it? Like, how, do you, how does that game transition to this team this year? Well, there's two things. For me, it never goes away. So I wake up in the middle of the night thinking about games that we didn't win, thinking about those situations. And I have always thought eventually as I get older, I'll wake up thinking about like the Fiesta Bowl. It never happens that way. It never gets off my mind. But with the team and social media nowadays, we don't have to bring any of that up. That stuff comes back to them all the time. Right. For example, it's just normal. We go to media days uh, in Dallas this year, and it's at the same location. People talk about what happened in that corner of the field. So they get enough of that to be motivated. And it's interesting with young people now, and I tell the team this, if you're planning on me motivating you to play tough and be a physical football team, you're the wrong guy because that's not really what my job is. My job is to prepare you. you got to want to be willing to do it yourself. So we really don't have to talk about it much. The players get enough of it because of social media. No question. And then you guys have that amazing game mm -hmm. in the Fiesta Bowl. What about that game in particular? Down 21, mm -hmm. you come back, you win that game against a brand like Notre Dame. Sure. What have you seen from that game, what it's done, maybe in the offseason and, and also just for the OSU brand? Well, it was huge for our brand. You know, at the, in the fourth quarter, we had 14.2 million people watching the game. Um, at, at the uh, trophy celebration, when we could celebrate our logo, there were still 5 million watching. So we got a national exposure, probably second to none. Um, we were very fortunate. When, when the game started after the first quarter, I knew it was going to be difficult because Notre Dame was really tall and long, and you know that by playing in, up front in the, with the down guys. Defensively and offensively, they had length and they had width with their arms. They're tough to deal with up front. We had success last year, 71 or two sacks, led nation in sacks, um, and over 70% of them was just a four-man rush. We had, we had success with our down guys getting to the quarterback. Notre Dame was holding us off. We, we, we couldn't get to the quarterback, and then we couldn't block them very well because they were so long. We then decided we had to go to speed and just play fast. Not only were, because we were behind, but we couldn't match up with them physically, so we said well, we're going to find out what kind of shape they're in. We're going to play fast from this point moving forward. Um, it worked out well for us. We talked in halftime about we need to score once. We score once. Now we get went to a two two score game. Uh, more pressure on the play caller from Notre Dame. They make a mistake, we score again. And you know what's interesting with the game? We fumble on the half yard line in the fourth quarter with, I don't know, six, seven minutes to go. Then we fumble again on the seven yard line. If we score right there both those games, we're, we're basically just taking a knee and running the clock out. Now it ended up being a nail biter because we fumbled. But at one point we could have been ahead by 14 points. So. Um, our conditioning paid off. Our guys, they believe they came back. Spencer was fantastic. Awesome. Uh, Malcolm Rodriguez makes an interception in a big key, in a big situation. Uh, Brock Martin is rushing the passer, and he's blocked, and he reaches around with one hand, grabs the quarterback, and pulls him down, and gets a big sack, and gives us a chance to win the game. Awesome, awesome game. You mentioned Malcolm, man. I'm watching him on hard knocks. Mm -hmm. I, first of all, I know how he lasted the sixth round. That's another story for the day, but... What a phenomenal young man he is, and I'm glad that all of America is getting a chance to see the kind of young man and football player he is. It's, it's fun to watch him. I'm sure you're yeah. enjoying it. Well, you know, and being in the NFL, you know, if you're not quite the height and you don't quite have the length, um, what they'll tell you is percentages are you're not going to make it. Right. So they go on percentages. Um, he's different. He's always been different. Um, other than the down guys that play in the SEC and the guy at Baylor last year who's fantastic, why he didn't come out early, I don't know. But um, I thought he was the best defensive player in the country, Agreed. most productive guy in the country, other than those down guys that just push, push the offensive line back into the quarterback. Um, but you're seeing who he is. You know, he's already learned both positions in Detroit. He'll play for a long, long time. He's just special. He sees things differently, and he's tough. The guy's really physical and tough. And, and that's what I love about you and your program. Even though you're a quarterback, mm -hmm. you always preach toughness and physicality. Talk about camp. How was fall camp? Did you get that? That Because you told me last year, you guys kind of raised the bar a little bit mm -hmm. from a physicality standpoint. Mm -hmm. It paid dividends 
Did you follow that same blueprint this offseason? We practiced hard, and it's a tough man's game. Um, it's a violent game. Uh, it's not normal for two humans to want to run into each other. Um, only certain people can do it. That's why it's the greatest teaching tool for life. This game is a great teaching tool. We practiced hard in preseason. Um, sometimes we get guys beat up. Um, I take a lot of heat from the staff. Um, they're on me all the time about, Coach, I know we're being too physical. It's, you know, this is a lot. Uh, but I have to make a decision, and I don't call plays anymore. I don't draw plays up. My decisions, physicality and toughness. I would rather be in a game during the season early in, in September and maybe a guy or two's banged up a little bit, even though none of us like that and they, they can't play for a little while, then stand there and get my butt kicked because I'm not physical. I can't, that, that's hard for me to swallow. And I think I'm responsible for that. That's my job. My job is to weed through everybody um, listen to the players, but also watch practice, and then listen to the coaches, and then ultimately do what I think is best to be a tough physical football team. It's been a great recipe for success, and I respect the heck out of it. As far as that goes, you know, your first year was my last year. So mm -hmm. Your first year as head right. coach was my last year of playing college football. Now this is year 18, I believe. Mm -hmm. I would love to know, compare and contrast, Coach Gundy back in 2005 to the Coach Gundy heading into 2022. What's the same? What's different? So when I took the job, I, I'm, I'm being really honest here. I wasn't smart enough to know how hard it was. I just worked. That's the way I was raised. That's what was instilled in me as um, a kid. And I'm fortunate because if I really would have been smart enough to sit down and think about everything that had to take place for us to be successful at Oklahoma State, I wouldn't have been able to get the job done because I would have pan hit panic mode. So for, gosh, 10 years, eight to 10 years, I never looked up. I mean, we just went full speed. We practiced hard. We made mistakes. We corrected them. We were fortunate. We picked up some guys, Okun, Des Bryant, Kendall Hunter, Brandon Whedon, Zach Robinson. We were able to pick, some guys, pick up some guys that could change games and then build a culture of toughness and discipline that allowed us to keep things going. Um, my patience level was zero, which was a mistake, but I didn't know. All I knew was, you know, I spent a lot of my life wrestling. So all I knew was is go, just go until they blow the whistle or until you go off the mat and then keep going. That's all I knew. So I've learned patience now. And that comes from my mom. She told me all, during my third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth year coach as a head coach, she said, you, you need patience, Michael. You're, you're out of control. And I said, well, I, I don't understand. She said, you need to listen and be more patient, and it's going to make you a better football coach. I didn't, I didn't understand that. I just kept going. Well, I understand that now. My last three or four years, I've learned patience. I've learned to be patient with the team, patient with the players, patient with the staff. This is a big operation now. So much different than when you played when I first started coaching. Uh, we have 140 players and there's almost 100 personnel in this building now. So you're talking about a 250 person operation in this building. And essentially, whether you like it or not, I'm the CEO of that. So I'm in charge of all these egos. Guys like you and me that fought every day in every game and could not stand to lose. Coaches feel the same way as players, and so I'm the guy trying to manage all those people. So I've learned to be patient, listen, take advice. I do not micromanage, and it's real simple. If a player doesn't want to do it, if he doesn't want to practice hard, if he doesn't want to be physical, he's not going to do it. So we communicate, we talk to them, we try to make it better, and then if they don't want to do it, they're eventually not going to do it, and we put somebody else in, and we just live by those standards. That's the changes I've made from then until now. Love well, that. Uh, fascinating to see not just how much you've changed, but just the sport of football, sure. college football in general. This team in particular, you've got a really good team again. Mm -hmm. I, I talked with you in Arlington a little over a month ago. I could tell then you felt very confident about your football team. Let's start offensively. Line of scrimmage. I think that offensive line's got a chance to be better. What do you think, your old line? We have seven guys that have played some meaning that they've been in, in, in physical games, uh, been out there against good teams, been behind, had to come back. Seven guys that we can rotate through. Um, we have two centers, which is good. There's years that I was concerned we didn't have a backup center, which is not good. 
Um, those guys are going to need to stay healthy, but they're physical, they've come on, they're all stronger, they've played together, they'll be able to communicate. They should be fine. Obviously, Spencer's back. Um, Spencer's been fantastic. Um, he's got uh, a little bit of an unfair um, decision-making process from the national media because we couldn't run the ball or protect him. So you've watched a lot of football in your life. Yeah. Watch high school football, watch college football, and watch the NFL. If you can't rush the ball a little bit and you don't protect the quarterback, they don't play very good. And, and that's where he's been. He's been really good for us. Um, he gets our offense. He knows it like the back of his hand. Playing quarterback in our offense is difficult. Playing any other position in our offense is not as difficult. Quarterbacks have to have reps, and once they learn it, they get better and better and better. So he's gotten to that point. Whiteouts, we got more guys back. Last year, you know, we were playing with uh, true freshmen the first two or three games a year. Very scary. Um, we have depth now. Okay, Braden Johnson's even coming back from being out a year. Um, I'm excited about watching him play. And then we, we've got to get some play at running back. See, Jalen Warren was fantastic for us last year. And now we've got younger guys. Dom has played some, Dominic's played some, but the other guys haven't played much. Those guys need to carry the load. They're going to have to be able to give us something close to what Jalen gave us. And then we need to stay healthy. Defensive-wise, we've got a bunch of defensive linemen. We're going to roll in seven or eight guys. So they should be able to stay fresh. We had that luxury last year. Very seldom we have a defense lineman play more than 35 plays a game last year. So that really helps with your practices through October and November, your durability and your longevity with those guys because they stay fresh. And you know this, most of the fans don't realize this. When you don't have defensive linemen to rotate, they get beat up in practice. After game five or six, they're beat up. Subconsciously, they don't practice as well as they need to be because they're tired. They don't play as well. So we're very fortunate in that situation. Youth at linebacker. We've got speed, we have guys that'll strike you, but they haven't played much. So we have four guys there, okay? We've got uh, Nick Martin, we got Benson, we got um, uh, Cobb, okay? And, ben, and uh, uh, Lamont Bishop. Those four guys have got to roll in there and try to give us what we had last year. And that'll be the toughest position to fill. Malcolm Rodriguez is probably the best in the country. And then Devin Harper had a fantastic year. So those guys will have the work cut out. Corners wise, we got um, um, Muhammad back and Corey back. Those guys played some, in fact, quite a bit in the bowl game. You like Jabbar Muhammad a lot. Yeah, and Corey. Yeah. I mean, Corey's really, really, really talented. Um, he just needs, you know, come on, get some reps. Those guys played quite a bit, so they'll learn. They're going to make mistakes, but they'll get better and better and better each game. And then with our safeties, JT's kind of a returner. We have some other young guys. Little Harper um, played some. Um, so there's some youth there with some maturity. So they'll, those guys will come on. I'm hoping our pass rush can play a big factor and not make those, cover, those guys cover very long. And then special teams wise, we got everybody back. Got all of our, our snappers, kickers, holders, punters. So I feel really good about it. The summary of all of it is got to stay healthy at key positions. I mean, that's been Oklahoma State for my 18 years. We need to keep our line healthy. Okay, we need to keep our wideouts healthy need to keep our um, linebackers healthy as these guys grow and develop. Uh, and pretty much that's everybody in the country other than five or six schools. Sure. I want to go with that defensive line because mm -hmm. I believe maybe not Alabama. You got Will Anderson, you got Dallas Turner. I think you guys have the best pass rushing front four in college football. I think it's that good. And part of that reason is Trace Ford. I feel mm -hmm. like he's a forgotten person, mm -hmm. even around the Oklahoma State crowd. How has his health been? What are kind of your expectations from him? We know Colin Oliver. Tyler Lacey, I think he's got yeah. great versatility. Brock Martin, mm -hmm. but Trace Ford, you can get that fourth elite pass rusher. That's when protections, as you know, you don't mm -hmm. have much of a choice. How's he been doing? How's he looked in camp? These guys, all these guys, you got Irby coming in there also. Um, I think we'll have the luxury of them not knowing where to set protection. Yeah. They can only double team one guy. Yeah. And so I'm hoping that with the health of him, because he's practiced really fast. Yeah. And he looks fast coming up the field. So that's a tackle's nightmare, right? There's two guys. So now I don't get any help over here. Most of the time, they're probably going to try to set and, and get a double team on, on Tyler Lacey, mm -hmm. which is going to single the other guy up and then put two singles on the edge. Or they can try to uh, double up uh, Oliver or Ford. You got Brock Martin and, 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 and Irby. And then that would single up Tyler Lacey. So, 
we keep those guys fresh and um, Trace continues to develop. See, I'm, I feel really good about once the game gets started and he gets out there and gets banged around and gets hit and he realizes, hey, this is going to be fine. I think he's going to start rushing up the field and be just like a nightmare coming up the field. I really do. I love that. And then Coach Mason, mm -hmm. you know, just what have you seen from him and just expectations? I know you guys are going to keep a lot of stuff the same. Mm -hmm. He's probably going to have his own little nuance. That's right. How impressed have you been with him? You had him in the spring, now fall camp. Where do you see him as a coordinator of your defense at? Right. He's going to speak their language. We're not, the terminology is going to stay almost the same, which allows our team to can get better. We went through a four-year period with Jim of getting that settled. I didn't want to change that. Uh, so he's been willing to come in and change it. He's doing some things that he feels that we need to do, along with discussing with our defensive staff. There were a few changes we needed to make anyway. We made those adjustments. But he has a magnetic personality. People, players like to be around him. Uh, that's important nowadays. You know, he can talk to the team and, and they listen to him and they believe in him. Uh, he's helped me a lot, being a former head coach, being a coordinator for a long time, being around really good people. You know, he spent time out there with David Shaw at Stanford, uh, who's been highly successful. He handles the defensive side just like Casey handles the offense, so I don't have to mess with it. I can just be a head coach, and, and he handles all the discipline and stuff with the staff and the players and then makes my job much easier. Great hire by you. I mean, that's a tough role to fill, sure. and you did it amazingly. Central Michigan – Thursday night coming up next week. Mm -hmm. Just the level of excitement. Sure. I'm sure you, I don't know if you brought up the last time Central Michigan was here, which I still think was the most egregious <laughs> yeah. call I've ever seen in the Crazy. history of college football. The one time I think they should have actually changed the outcome of the game. Mm -hmm. But just thoughts on that game coming up. And do you reference that other game just to remind your team, hey, this is a program that can and will come in here and, and you know put a fight up if you don't you know treat them with the respect. Well, concern. that conference does that, right? All those teams in that MAC conference play really well. They're used to playing Power 5 schools. They do it all the time. And they get um, really tough, hard-nosed Malcolm Rodriguez's, Brock Martins. They get a lot of players like that that get overlooked by Ohio State and Notre Dame. Or not overlooked, just don't get taken. And they have those guys, and they have good coaching. You know, you're talking about a guy that had tremendous success coaching at uh, Colorado State, I believe, and then Florida. He was at Florida coaching, and, and we all know that if things don't go right early, you can go south. He knows what he's doing. He's calling plays, involved in the offense, and these guys are tough guys. I mean, I'm just telling you, watch them on tape. Up front, defensive line, offensive line, they're tough guys. They have a hard-nosed running back. They play old-school, hard-nosed football. Our team's very aware of that. And so we'll have to play well and start off and try to get them playing our game versus us playing their game. Last one, mm -hmm. you know, I asked you a similar question last, last season before the year, and you guys were so close. Uh, you know, you're able to take down Oklahoma here in a great Bedlam mm -hmm. matchup. You're inches away from a Big 12 title. For this team in 2022, what is a key or a couple of things that have to go right aside from health for you guys to get that second Big 12 championship? The health's important, like you mentioned, but it'll be – important to see how quick our linebackers can pick up what's going on, okay? We've put him in physical practices. We've scrimmaged. We've done all that. It's not the same. Come out here, you turn the lights on to 60,000 people. We need them to learn and grow really fast. Now, the good news is we're going to be able to rotate guys through to keep them fresh because if you chase the ball on defense, you're going to get tired. We've got to have guys to sub. If you're tired, you're not thinking, you're not playing as fast. We, we need to try to avoid that. And then we need to get – quality running back play. We need those guys to give us plays, to be physical, to be tough. We need them to pick up yards to allow Spencer to do what he does best, which is distribute the ball to skill guys who can make big plays. I think that'll be the key to us having success. Well, I can't wait to see what it looks like. Coach, best of luck this season. Yeah. Thanks so much for the time today. Thank you.